Oh, hi, internet. Didn't see you there. I'm coming back to you because I want to make myself a skirt today. And I want to make it Slytherin. Pretty much. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but my Harry Potter Hogwarts house is Slytherin. It explains a lot. It makes sense. Hybrid Slytherclaw. Fine, Slytherin. I did just get that jumper though, and I was so happy when I saw that there was a Slytherin one, but that's beside the point. Today we're talking skirts. To go with all my Slytherin attire, I would like a Slytherin skirt. And by Slytherin, I just mean green. But I feel like it goes with the Slytherin vibe, as you can tell, green and silver. I feel like it would go with this jumper real well. Like, look at that, look at those greens together. They're great. And like, yeah, there's a lot of different greens that you can buy. But this was the nicest green fabric that I could find at Spotlight today, okay? I did get a hundred dollar gift card for my birthday with my boyfriend for Spotlight and I no longer have a gift card. This particular skirt I have made before, just the full length version. This is kind of my idea, um, make a green skirt. I've just been torn whether to make it from this pattern that I've already done before or if I want to make it an Edwardian walking skirt that's short and what, okay? I want it to be down knee length. I have made it before, it has clasps back here but it's pretty much just the front panel and a lot of pleating a lot of pleating this is the full length purple monster that i made and i'm actually using the same type of fabric just to screen i'm putting in a zip rather than clasps it will just save me from having to wear a long shirt okay that's the thing when you make these skirts that have plackets at the back that don't need securing apart from securing at the top it's gonna fall open sometimes and you need a long shirt, and I don't want to always worry about that. Things I've learned from wearing the purple skirt religiously. So I've gotten a zip, this might be a bit long, but it should be fine. I've gotten matching threads and a different coloured thread that I have to keep away. For the ribbon that ties at the back with the eyelets, I'm torn with not doing metal eyelets, doing hand stitched eyelets in like this silver, and also doing some finger ribbon. I'll show you what I mean later, and I'll show you the video for the actual closure. That is not right now. So the closure stuff can go up. Yeah, this is the fabric I want to use. It's a nice weighty and it doesn't like crease too easy. It does still crease, but needs less ironing, which I'm all about. Panam Mechanical in the color Bottle from China. 100% polyester. Could I use a cotton? Yeah, but I like this fabric. I also have a lining that I picked up a cup a week or so, maybe two weeks ago. It was just clearance green fabric and it, it matches pretty well. So I'm just gonna use that as a flat lining. That's gonna be the main difference between this skirt and the one I've made previously is that, because I also wanna do the Edwardian, I wanna do this skirt with flat lining, which is a more historically correct lining, rather than, you know, sewing your lining together, sewing the outside together, and then sewing them both together, and then try to finish off my seams that way, because it will be fun. And I like the idea of historical dress and stuff, so don't at me. <laughs> What I do need to do with this McCall's pattern that is very loved is find all my pieces, work out what size I need, how long I need it, start marking it out and cutting it from there. We did just find this birch choco pen. I don't know. It's a chalk pen. Well, chalk. And it's got one of those little, the wheels with the pointy bits at the end. So you run that over and it deposits chalk at the same time. Would it be good on a thin, delicate fabric? Probably not, but I'm gonna give this a go. I'm gonna make a review video about it. We'll just see what happens. Because I'm flatlining, I do have these fat two threads that are just cheap, shitty threads to base them together. Because I could do this in one evening. I know I can. But I want to take my time with it, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm in the middle of making my sewing bible, and by in the middle, I just decided to do it tonight. And I'm going to measure my waist and my distance to my knee and stuff so that I have an idea figures wise And then I'll just measure it on me and cut it from there <laughs> This is my eternal struggle with measuring Should I do it in inches or centimeters or both because we don't use a metric like we use centimeters But a lot of shit needs inches The other reason I want to do this pattern is because I'm about to go on a no-carb diet set by my doctor because she wants me to and exercise routine. So we're looking forward to losing a shit ton of weight and I'm a bit of a chunk girl, but this should be able to be sized down. Um, haven't sized down the purple one yet. That is because I'm lazy. And when I lost weight, I just tied it a bit tighter and it was a bit loose, but not enough to warrant sizing down. So that's gonna be a fun future video because my idea is I can just incorporate the extra length into the pleats and cut down my band. We'll see how that goes in the future though, and if I lose weight, you'll never know. For reference, I am a size 16 to 18 Australian. Um, what does that mean? 
I don't know, Google it. I might put it up if I feel like it. The thing I have to remember with measuring my waist is I don't want to go too loose or too tight. I'm just going for like the biggest my waist is rather than like the sucked in so I have room to move. 4309. Now, if I sucked it in, and obviously foundationally this is meant to be worn with a corset, but I don't do that normally, so why would I do that now? So, see, I sucked it in and stood the way I would normally stand, and it's a 40, compared to a 43. If I did it as a 43, it would have some issues. I don't need to worry about hips or anything with this pattern, because it uses a lot of fabric, but natural waist, say 24. I'm also pretty tall, I'm 175 centimeters. I need to really incorporate the length. Something I eternally worry about is how long is everything? I also just brought a tailor's ham, which I'm really excited about. This is the McCall 6097 pattern, M6097 pattern. It's a costume, do I know what period? By the fact that it has a bustle and the sleeves on it and the closures, I'd be guessing somewhere in the 1800s. But I'm not sure. Or it's just a complete costume piece and has no historical thing in it at all. I have made the blouse that goes with this before and it is real low on me. Okay, so roll call. We need 11. 13, yep, okay, cool. It tells you how to cut it. The problem is I'm going to be changing up the hem. I'm going to cut them out one at a time because I want to. Skirt front is one that is the smallest that has been ripped in half. Because me. That's why. Me. Luckily, I have tape. If behind here looks like a dumpster fire, you don't want to see the rest of the sewing room. It is a dumpster fire, but we're about to get on top of it. <laughs> now, hypothetically, because this pattern has been folded, I should iron it, but I'm not going to. It also has a tear in it. That's, that's helpful. So I ended up just measuring the length that I wanted the skirt to be to my knee and I ended up cutting it a couple of inches longer although I folded the pattern about where I'd want it to be I think or I might have folded it a bit lower just so I had a couple of inches to play with if I cut the hem a bit wonky. I cut the top fabric out first and then the lining which you can see here I'm just using the chalk and cutting it out. It turns out I had to add extra length to the waistband. I think. I had to add a couple of inches because it is just a straight rectangle, that didn't really matter. And then I had to add an extra pleat onto each of my side panels. So what I did, and you might see it when I get to the side panels, is I measured out how big a pleat is and then I just moved it over from the edge to that amount. Or I think I'm, yeah, you can see it there with the ruler. I did learn while I was flatlining this that I really need to work on how I cut out patterns because it's not the neatest cutting and I didn't have the neatest seam allowance on all of them. I did just put the top fabric onto the lining to cut it because I figured that would be the easiest way and it worked out well for me so it was the easiest way. I did remember to mark the number of whatever pattern piece each piece is because I know the side and the back panels look very similar after you've cut them out. I did run out of material for my top fabric so I had to use two different panels and piece it together to make the one panel but that's period so we're fine. It just meant I had an extra seam on one side and I made sure I put it in the middle of a pleat so that it was more covered and less noticeable. I also went through, which you didn't see here, and flatlined everything. That's just putting the lining and the top fabric wrong sides together and I did a really big running stitch to base it all together. You can also do a pad foot or a pad stitch which I just learned about, so I'm gonna try that on something else. I'm going through on here and I think I'm just sewing all the seams together. and then I pinned everything together so that I knew it was going to fit. And as you can see there, it fits perfectly, which is great. It's a bit long and I haven't put the waistband on yet though. Am I sitting on the table? Maybe. Um, there's also, you can see like mom's pile of fabric. <laughs> it's been about a week, or not quite a week. 
and there's a few reasons for that. I can't remember where I finished off filming, so I'll just cover everything that I did. So I basted all the pieces together. I still have the flat base along the hem and the top. Then I sewed everything together. And from there I've been hand stitching, um, I think it's hand felt seams. I know, I'm finishing them off because I wanted to work on my hand stitching. And also, I watched a video and I thought it would be cool. There's kind of a, they progressively get neater and nicer. The problem is too, my first two were not cut correctly, so I didn't have a lot to fold over, but you can kind of see it. A hand felt seam. Pretty much, you can see it here, because it's half done. So, you cut three of the pieces of fabric down to about a quarter inch, so you have one seam of the line, half inch of the lining left, and then you fold that over. I'll try to zoom in. My hands are disgusting because I spilled paint on them, so I'm sorry. So, you cut down your seam to half an inch, a quarter inch there. You have about half an inch. Fold it over, fold it down, and then stitch onto the lining. I'm kind of saying there, that's all stitched. That's pinned. That's stuff that's free. See, I've just been going through and working on my hand stitching, which as you can see is not consistent at all. Um, but it's getting there, it's getting better. The other thing that I did, when I finished one side of seams, because I started from the center back when it came to that, is there is so much fabric here. Um, I went through and I base stitched my pleats together. I had already marked them out with chalk previously, but I double checked them, they were fine. Now they're all basted together so that I can go along. Sew across the top when I'm done, and that should be, should be a job well done. One thing I did do when it came to this, because you have to fold them a certain way, is that I took a picture of the pattern so that while I was sitting down later, I could refer back to the pattern to see which arrow I needed to follow. Yeah, you could mark that on the fabric, but I didn't. So yeah, now I'm going to resume stitching this by hand until I finish the last three stitches. I'm considering doing the last three by machine. Oh, the last two by machine. Because it is a pretty even cut piece and I still have the bottoms and tops open, I have been opening them all to get my hand in so that I make sure I'm not stitching to the top one. In theory I should be able to pin and then sew it, but as much as the lazy part of me would love to do that, there's too much of me that really wants to practice my hand sewing to do that. And it's a struggle. I have enough of this fabric that I think I could make a matching corset. And I've been real interested in corsetry at the moment. So we'll see about that. You might notice in my future sewing endeavours that a lot of it might be vintage or historic sewing. Because it's been interesting me lately, whereas mum's learning a lot about like embroidery and techniques, seeing as she can't do much. Let's get this going. Here you can just see me sewing the seams. I was using a back stitch at this point. I started with a whip or belt stitch, and then I, or a hemming stitch, it depends on what you want to call it. And then for some reason, I decided a back stitch was best. Back stitches take a lot of thread and a lot more time. I, it's probably just one that I was a lot more comfortable with at the time, that's why I started doing it. And then I went back to a whip stitch just to tack down the edges because it is a lot easier. The other thing that I did, which was slightly weird with my hand stitching, is I stuck my hand in the lining to make sure that I wasn't getting the top fabric while I was doing this. That's because I did get it a couple of times and that really annoyed me, but also that's how I felt more comfortable at the time. Ideally, you should be able to do a whip stitch just through the lining fabric without needing to hold it in such a weird way, but I'm still learning, and if that made me feel comfortable at the time, that made me feel comfortable at the time. Just so you know, while I'm recording this voiceover, I'm also drawing out plans for two other projects that I'm about to work on and updating my sewing bible with them. Here you can see that I've, once again, 
pinned all the pleats in place on the sides that I finished the hand felt seams. I haven't finished showing my seams, I've just finished one half. And I'm going through and I'm basting down all of these pleats. It did make it a lot easier having them hand basted and not having pins in them. This is where I project is where I've really fallen in love with hand basting and it's fantastic. You can see I'm once again trying it on to make sure that everything is sitting fine and it's all pleat, like basted fine. I went through and I sewed the top half of the, uh, not sewed, ironed the top half of the pleat and that was just to make the sewing side of it easier. I know in the purple one I don't actually iron it regularly and I'm ironing on the interfacing because I wanted, I couldn't remember if it was or what, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. So I had to then stitch around all the sides of it to get it to do what I wanted it to do. And right here I'm also pulling out all my basting stitches and trimming down the edges of the interfacing. I'm just going through here as well and sewing probably a quarter inch away from the top along my pleats to hold them into place. And then I've gone through and for about the first inch, inch and a half of the pleat, I've actually sewn it down. I um, started at the top, went down and back stitched my way back up. Looking back, I could have just stopped at my point, left my needle down, spun the fabric around and sewn back up. Would have made it a lot easier, but apparently I like to struggle and <laughs> that's what I decided to do. You can also see here that I'm removing the basting stitches as I go along so that I didn't get them caught in the sewing. I had done this on my purple skirt, that's why I did it on this one. I did accidentally get a couple of the pleats on the underside sitting wrong when I'd sewn my band across, so I don't think I showed me having to go back and fix that, but I did that before I sewed each pleat down, making sure I caught it on the underside. On this, I've folded my waistband, right waist together, sewing the edges, and now I've separated it and I'm sewing the right sides together of one side of the waistband onto the skirt, so that I could then turn it around, which you can see me pinning it there, to make sure it all fitted well. And yeah, I haven't sewn down the inside one yet, I'm going to do that by hand. Here I'm just basting in my zip. I've done a zip one other time and it was slightly wonky, that's why I wanted to hand baste it. Tacking it in place did a really good job because then I could just sew it and it has lined up perfectly. The thing that I messed up here is that I sewed it to both the top fabric and the lining and I should have separated the lining at this point to sew in the zip so that I could cover it on the inside, but I didn't do that. What I haven't shown here is that before I put in the eyelets, I went through and I whip stitched the inside of the band to the skirt so that on the inside it's all nice and covered in. I turned it in by I think half an inch or a quarter inch, however <coughs> much seam allowance was allowed and just whip stitched it into place. I also finished off my back seam where the zip is and I made sure that I stuck the top of the zip into the waistband for some securing and also just because I think it's nice when you can't see the top of the zip. I did a smart thing and I got the paper to be the same width as the skirt and marked where I want my eyelet place placement to be and kind of cut it out a bit so that I could mark them and place them. I then cut it and stuck the eyelet in and hammered them down. I still managed to get them wonky. <laughs> On the other side of the skirt it's probably a few mil over to the side more and in hindsight, I can see how I've done that, but it was just annoying that I did it. So maybe watch out for that. Uh, I'm also using, I think it's a double-sided knitting needle. I forget what mum uses it for, but that's real great for stretching the eyelet holes open. Here I'm setting up for finger lacing. Um, I will put a video here of it. I think I heard a finger lacing from Bernadette. 
here's her channel anyway and she has a great tutorial on it there's a lot of other people that have a lot of tutorials on it I'm just doing the basic one that she had on hers oh, I've practiced it a couple of times the first time that I did this I had to redo it because I didn't keep the length and because I'm sitting back so far that didn't work out well I ended up having to lean forward and open my arms wider to keep that tension nice and I didn't think about that at the start so the tension is a little bit wonky and I'm just tying off the ends here. Um, I've threaded it through standardly in the back of the skirt there but I have changed that since. Here I've marked on a ruler where I want the hem length to be and I'm just going through and pushing the flat edge of the ruler into the waistband. I think I'll show you a close up of it later. And it's got the two lines on it, so I'm just marking it and then I'm going through with my ruler and connecting all those lines. It worked out great for getting a solid straight hem. The issue ended up being that I have a bit of a butt and because of that, I needed to make the back hem longer as standard people do when they have a bottom that is not the same as their front. And <laughs> So I ended up going back through and dropping it at the back by the same, I think it was like a quarter inch or something, that was the difference between the line, my folding line and my sewing line. I've dropped that down. Around the sides, mum told me where it started to go a bit wonky and needed to be dropped. So I've just taken it from that point and gradually dropped it. And that helped make my hem perfectly even. The thing that I didn't show you guys here was the fact that I did go and I pinned it up to show to get the kind of the desired length so that I could measure it and get multiple opinions on what length I should have it and then to make sure that my length was straight. You can see I'm just trying it on there. I ended up going through and on the line that I was going to sew it on, I did a longer stitch than usual on my sewing machine and that turned out great because I'm still learning how to hand fold and hand stitch for keeping my lining together and so that I had something to stitch against. I did cut about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of that as well and I found a little bit of weird things. And you can see me here using, what's that thing, the metal thing that you put on your finger. I've forgotten, currently I've forgotten what you call the thing that protects your finger that I have been saying like 15 times for the last three days when sewing. Anyway, I'm using little circle metal ones that mum found on eBay, I'll see if I can find a link to them, that were really handy, but halfway through you might see I go to a faux leather one. Um, I just cut a bit of leather from an old bag that I had that I no longer use and had in my dash for when I wanted to use it. I just cut a square of that and made one by hand which I might make a video on showing. But here you can see I just go through and whip stitch the hem into place or hem the hem. I did start pinning it to my hand because that is a thing that they used to do and it did help with keeping some of the tension but I did end up going to just using my fingers for it which was a lot easier and almost more intuitive. There are different ways that you can do this. I believe you are meant to have it over the middle finger and the other two fingers holding it down, but I ended up liking it where I had two fingers under and the finger at the back holding it down. And I used my thumb to hold it down as well. It did take a while to hem, but I was fine with that. And I did actually cut my hem in parts. I had to cut it down a little bit. I was also running it through a bit of thread conditioning that mum's made up with beeswax, candle wax, and coconut oil, I believe and she's just found that handy for her hand piecing. I went over to the quilting wonder clips instead of pinning the hem as well because wonder clips are so easy rather than using pins. It just makes my life easier. I use them on quilts for bias all the time but I forgot they exist and by all the time I mean whenever I get around to doing bias on something. Here is where I really felt my stride and I was just listening to My Favourite Murder and sewing away. My Favourite Murder is a podcast by the way. So this is the completed skirt. I did go down and lightly iron all the pleats down. The second view, I've put a petticoat under it so that I have, just, I think it's like a rockabilly 1950s sort of petticoat. And I'm really happy with the skirt. Mum said if I was going to an event to wear the petticoat, otherwise day to day, just wear the skirt naturally. And here it is with my cape. I am going to make its own cape and I have a whole witchy poo outfit planned around the skirt now. Um, I did record some video of the 
inside and the outside of the skirt just so you can see it lining down. I really love how it looks on the inside with the hand felt seams and just it's really pleasing to me the way that it was done and I'm so proud of this skirt and how well I made it. It does need to be washed so that some of the pleats and all the thread kind of settle down and relax into itself once it has been washed. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it through the washing machine or hand wash it. That has been my eternal question for the last day or two. But once I do, I might, I'll be wearing it on a video anyway, so you'll get to see. So I think in my little prance around video, you could see the hem was, the pleats were a bit weird. <laughs> but that is my skirt. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make it. I enjoy wearing it and making it. And I am considering changing the cording in the back. I guess that's all for today's video. Once again, you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where we try to keep up to date when things are happening. Mum's still learning that she can post things to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So she might be posting more there at this stage because she, as I said, can't do a lot of sewing. But we'll see how this goes. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.